Since my last video, uh, I've made a little bit of progress. I power, I power washed the entire uh, power plant frame in order to uh, expose any rust that I might have on the subframes and suspension components. I was delightfully surprised at how much, uh, how clean all of that was. I had very little uh, rust removal to do. Then I reinstalled my newly rebuilt steering rack and got rid of the body after I finished stripping every valuable item off of it. Uh, I took it to a scrap yard and here's a video of that. Well, it was kind of surreal watching a perfectly good Mazda Miata frame get dropped on the ground. But I'm moving on to smaller and lighter things, so it was well worth it. Uh, the, the frame weighed about 555 pounds, and at nine cents a pound for steel, it only yielded $50. So I've got just a few weeks left until the frame arrives, and I've decided to take on a full timing belt and water pump replacement. Uh, in preparation just to freshen the car up before I uh, put it inside a frame and have trouble doing it. Um, to do that, I have found a company called a company out of Virginia called Rosenthal Mazda that has a great uh, parts department and they actually have a kit that gives you basically everything you need to uh, change the timing belt, water pump, uh, serpentine belt, idler pulleys, valve cover gasket, and all the associated gaskets and seals that you might want to change while you have all while you have all of these components off. Um, as you can see, this is the power plant frame that's been sitting in the garage for a while. When I was stripping the wire harness out. Originally, I utilized uh, this wire marking guide I just found it on Amazon that essentially gave me a series of numbers that I could utilize to mark every connection on every wire and label where those, uh, where every wire was disconnected from. I also used masking tape and letters in order to mark all of my, all of my mechanical and uh, tubing connections. Um, by the time I was done, I had well over 150 things that I disconnected, and while my memory is fairly good, uh, I didn't think I could remember that many things. So now, to keep from confusing myself further, I tend to use blue painter's tape to mark everything that I disconnect in this in this case. Uh, in order to do the valve or the uh, timing belt replacement, I have to remove all the wiring that gets in the way. Right, as you can see, this is the timing belt housing. Uh, at the bottom is the drive shaft pulley, then the water pump pulley, and then the thermostat housing. There's a few tubes that are still connected that have to be removed, and if you're doing this while it's still in the car, you have to take the upper uh, thermostat housing hose that'll be connected to your radiator off. From the top, you can see I've removed all the rest of the wiring and laid it off to the side here. There were actually very few things left at this point. Uh, the next step will be to remove the valve cover and uh, spark plugs and then start working my way down the front of the engine until I get to the uh, drive pulley. Remove the valve cover from the top, which exposed the top of the cam pulleys here. And there were three uh, timing belt covers, an upper, middle, and lower. And in order to remove those, I had to remove the belt, the water pump pulley, and the drive pulley. So now I have it fully exposed. And as you can see, where the light is focused is the drive pulley for the water pump. Before I can begin the process of replacing the timing belt, I have to go ahead and take off the two pulleys on either side. Uh, on the right is the idler, and on the left is the tensioner pulley. Begin that now. 
So I'm virtually complete here, and I have to apologize. I forgot to take a video when I was in the middle of the water pump. It gave me quite a bit of challenge, and I had never stopped to do any more videos. But as you can see, I've got my nice, new, shiny water pump in place. Um, here is the old one. It essentially goes right there. And I want to give you a few things that I learned in the process of doing the water pump. Um, you don't have to take those pulleys off. There's a black plate here that appears to overlap here, but it does not actually overlap the water pump. Um, there's a few gaskets in there, here, and then one that mates to the actual engine block. Uh, it, it's really just a quick replacement, but I made it a lot harder than it needed to be. Um, I also have gone ahead and gotten the new timing belt installed. Uh, some other things I learned, this bolt comes out fairly easy with an impact wrench. You have to take this flange off in order to get the timing belt on the other side of it. However, you have to uh, put like 130 pound foot of torque on that bolt to reattach it. Uh, in order to do that, you'll have to fabricate a tool. I used just a piece of angle iron to go over that bolt so that I could um, get it torqued down. Once that was done, essentially I slipped the new, I had already slipped the new belt in place. Then I installed the idler pulley to the uh, proper torque specs, 27 to 38 foot pounds. Uh, and then there's a great, um, a great timing belt change guide from Eximotive that walks you through all the different timing marks required. You can barely see them here, but if you read that guide, it's a step-by-step -step on how to get all, get, count the teeth and ensure that everything is done properly. And the last thing that you install is the tensioner pulley um, with this spring clip, and they have a few checks to ensure that you've got the proper belt tension. All I have left to do now is uh, button it up, and I'll show you everything when it's complete.